I clearly uh, don't need to tell you who this lady is, our four-time Ironman Hawaii champion, uh, unbeaten at iron distance, um, probably the greatest iron triathlete to live. I'm not sure Chrissy would tell you differently, but um, Chrissy Wellington. Um, first, I better give us a plug, actually. We had our 220 awards last night, so I do apologise for looking more dishevelled than usual, but um, Chrissy was there as well. So you have a good night, Chrissy. I had a wonderful, yeah, wonderful Thanks. night. It was actually really, really good fun. Um, I always love coming to the, the Tri Show. It's always been really, really important to me that I come back each year and come to the awards as well. Um, just to reconnect with people and come back to where it all started. So, you know, it was a great day yesterday and a really good night last night, although I didn't stay for the dancing. I don't, mm. I'm sure I, I you did. can't remember. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, a sign of a good night. <laughs> <laughs> can't remember. You're obviously looking very healthy. Can you tell everyone where you've been recently? Um, yeah, just make everyone <laughs> jealous. <laughs> yeah. um, I actually had the opportunity to go to uh, the Central American countries of Guatemala and Costa Rica. And it was a great combination of, of work and a little bit of play. Uh, in both countries, I was giving some speaking engagement, doing some speaking engagements and some charitable uh, events, so raising quite a bit of money for, for a couple of, of causes out there. Um, and in Costa Rica, I also was co-leader for a, for a bike tour. So it was a five-day bike tour. We had uh, 20 people. We capped it at 20 people, but had a great tour across Costa Rica, which was really, really good. Um, and what I found out there, actually, was a triathlon scene that is really very much alive and kicking, and it was, it was great to see. And I think one of my concerns always as an athlete is that Triathlon is very much the kind of province of, of the white middle class and that, you know, less developed countries, for want of a better word, might not have access to, to triathlon. But in both countries, the triathlon scene is very much alive and well. But what they don't have is a kind of coherence that we have in, in this country and others. They don't have a great federation. They don't have a great club structure. So one of the benefits that I found of my visit that I didn't really envisage was, um, I guess, the opportunity in my being there to kind of bring everyone together. So in Guatemala, I, there was about 400 people that, that came to, to, the, to the speaking engagement, and a lot of them didn't know each other beforehand. So hopefully, since, since my visit has kind of catalyzed a sense of, sense of community, and I really found... Um, going out there to be worthwhile in, in, in many, many, many ways. Okay, well, you, I mean, you've gone from your iron career, which is sort of um, quite monastic and obviously quite repetitive, and now things seem quite varied, because next weekend you're doing something slightly different as well, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I've never been one to pass up an opportunity, and then my friend said to me, Chrissy, um, do you want to do this cross-country ski marathon? Um, <laughs> and my first response is it was when someone said to me, Chrissy, do you want to do triathlon? Was then I can't ride a bike. And this time was I, I can't cross-country ski. And I'm going to spend the next month in Guatemala and Costa Rica where there's limited access to snow. Um, <laughs> my balance, as you all know, is pretty questionable. And I don't own any skis. Um, and I said, yeah, I'll do it. So <laughs> the next weekend, I'm doing a, a cross-country ski marathon um, in Engadin, Switzerland, very much to, to complete rather than compete and just avoiding um, making too many kind of Chrissy-sized holes in the snow. But that's my um, newest endurance, very much a challenge. Um, but yeah, you're right. I've gone from a life that was very, very monodimensional, very, very monkish, if you were, to a very diverse, rich in terms of different, varied experiences, um, and one that is no less challenging, but in, in, in a different way. And is that sort of going to, you know, is that how the rest of the year is going to unfold? Is it going to be packed with challenges around the world? Or? Yeah, I mean... 
I, upon retiring, I, I found it incredibly difficult. Um, I, my sense of self-worth, my identity was very much tied into me being a triathlete, was very much tied into me being four-time world champion. I didn't think that was altogether healthy and I felt that I was almost becoming my own story and forgetting who I was prior to the, to the sport, which was one indication for me that I needed to, to make a change, I think. Um, I as many of you know, feel really strongly that I have a platform and a responsibility now to use my position to um, affect positive change. And that's what I want to do. So in this year and in, in, in the coming years, my focus is very much on um, international development work. I'm um, quite heavily involved in developing two of, of my own projects, um, also being a patron for the charities that I, that I support, um, whilst continuing also to have a very strong foot in, in the triathlon world and in the triathlon community, both as an ambassador for my sponsors, but also doing events like this, doing public speaking engagements both to triathlon clubs, triathlon audiences, but also uh, corporate speaking engagements too. So as you can imagine, that coupled with the fact that I still like to train and I still like to do sport, both competitive and non-competitive, means that my life, yeah, is very, very rich and, and incredibly varied and much more so than it was as a, as a professional athlete. Now it's, I mean, it was Abu Dhabi, obviously the weekend just gone, Alistair won, won again. Um, but obviously the race season is starting to crank up now. I mean, do you, I mean, are there any regrets? Um, or are there, you know, if not, are there any elements of the Ironman racing, or the Ironman training that you do miss? Um, there's not a day goes by that I don't miss an element of, of training and racing. For Iron Man, um, I still absolutely love triathlon. I, I love Iron Man, and I love the gift that it's given me and continues to give so many others. Um, but I have no regrets about the decision I made. I know that I made the the very very best decision for me and, and my life, and. Um, what it boiled down to was um, remembering why I got into the sport in the first place. And I got into the sport in the first place was because, um, because I wanted to see how good I could be, full stop. And I remem remember saying to Brett when he asked me, what do you want out of the sport? Brett, I want to be in the sport five years and I wanted to see how good I can get. And... I think, I know, in Kona in 2011, I answered that question. I knew that that was the perfect race I could ever run. Not because it was the fastest time and not because it was my best performance, but because I feel that I overcame imperfections perfectly. And I felt that whatever I was searching for, namely, was I worthy of being world champion, I think I, I answered. I answered that question. Um, I had the fight and the race that I'd always dreamed of, both within myself and with my competitors. And it liberated me. And I felt, I don't know, somehow that I was enough and that I'd done enough and I'd proven enough to myself and that it was that it was time to, to move on to new challenges. And for all of us, including me, um, Ironman triathlon is, is one of our, our biggest challenges. And quite rightly, it's an amazing challenge. For, for me, it was no longer the challenge that it once was, I think, because I'd answered you know, the biggest question of all. The biggest challenge for me now is to cope with a life without it, is to cope 
with a life that is unstructured, un, you know, unregimented, that isn't focused on a, on a singular goal. That's the biggest challenge for me, is moving away from that and coping with the, the physical and the, the mental um, aspects of, of, of retirement. So I think Ironman was very much in my comfort zone. Being retired is very much out of it. And um, not that Iron Man was easy, but I think for someone like me, it was, it was, it suited my my nature and my characteristics. So to be out of that is actually, in some ways, more challenging than being being in it.